Please welcome Chris Louie. Thanks a lot. I'm going to uh, keep up with the, uh, the keynote speaker streamlined hairdo <laughs> theme that we have going on today. Unfortunately, I don't have video, but what I do have is a pretty cheesy clip art that is interspersed throughout. So hopefully that helps keep you guys entertained along with the, uh, along with the content. Okay, so um, you know, Nielsen spends a lot of time thinking about advertising effectiveness, and we will talk you know, for most of this about cross-platform advertising. But where we're gonna start is actually um, with the thing that you know, I think Nielsen spends the most time thinking about, which is you know, what consumers watch, right? So getting back to the consumer and, and the consumer experience, and then we'll move into the, uh, the advertising piece. Um, and you know, this is gonna be no surprise to you guys, but um, you know, for years we've talked about cross-platform um, video viewing, content viewing, right? And you know, the story is that it's finally here in terms of a really seamless cross-platform viewing experience. If anybody's been tuning into uh, March Madness, um, you know, you'll, you'll note that um, the, the experience across screens for watching these college basketball games versus think back three years ago, five years ago, night and day, right? It's, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty seamless. It's, it's a pretty compelling experience for me to watch on my iPad, even to watch on my phone um, relative to the TV set. Three years ago, five years ago, that was not the case, right? You had um, really janky, you know, video streams. Um, you had to, I think, queue up, right? About five years ago, you had to queue up to get into the games that you wanted to see. Um, now you're just, you're just in. You're not even, you're not even having to sign up. HBO Go was talked about, I think, on one of the, uh, one of the previous panels. You know, again, really, really compelling experience, which is leading to, uh, um, you know paradoxically uh, large amounts of, uh, of pirating. Um, and then you also have, you know, obviously professional uh, TV video content that has uh, come on, on board, both um, put out there directly by the TV networks, as well as by, you know, Hulu and other, and other aggregators. So really compelling experience. Not surprisingly, it's leading to, um, and you know, you guys all know this story, um, a, a shift in terms of the way people are consuming t professional TV content today. So if you flip, if, if you flip back to 2008, you know very little was being watched online and on mobile. Um, very little professional content was actually on in a very accessible way. Today, you know you have a lot of options, and uh, the percent of TV viewing. Um, while some may say that it's still you know relatively small, it is significant, right? Six percent of TV content being viewed online and on mobile, pretty significant, and it's growing very, very quickly. Um, the average online, the average uh, time spent um, uh, by, uh, per month is actually, was actually up year over year from Q1 of this year to Q1 of last year by 47% for the average online viewer. So very, very large increases um, still, still going on even though you know, compelling videos been been out there now for you know for a couple of years. Multitasking across screens is also you know extremely high. Um, we heard we heard a bit about that on the uh, on the social video panel, right? So 88 percent of tablet owners are using their device while watching TV at some at some ha, have wa um, at, at some point in time over the last year. Um, 87 percent of smartphone owners as well, right? So very high incidence of people watching TV. Um, and using devices at the same time. Um, what does that mean if you think about advertising, right? It's, it's pretty intuitive that, look, viewers are going across, the, 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 the content's there, the viewers are there, you know, um, we should be thinking about cross-platform advertising, right? And you know, if you see all of the headlines and you know, all the industry discussion is about cross-platform advertising, right? This is from a year ago, right, or two years ago. Cross-platform ad deals taking center stage at this year's upfront. You know now we have you know the new new fronts. You know a couple of years running. Um, smartphones and tablets at the center of cross-platform ad strategies. Um, ABC recently put out this announcement about guarantees to advertisers across platforms, right? Trying to treat video um, as a consistent thing, um, irrespective of the screen that it's being shown on um, when striking advertising deals. Um, What's the reality, though? The reality that we found in working with clients, and you know, we heard a bit of this um, throughout the session today, um, was that you know, cross-platform advertising isn't truly cross-platform yet. 
right? Um, people that were trying to minimize the amount of duplication and have as much reach as possible, you know, more or less the same amount of duplication and vice versa for people that are trying to have as much duplication as possible, you know, it was actually dead on for the sample of campaigns that we looked at. So what that's saying to me is, you know, even though they are, you know, saying, hey, we're going after, you know, truly integrated cross-platform strategies, it's actually not happening. What are the hurdles, right? So there are several hurdles to true cross-platform video advertising. Um, and this is where some of the cheesy clip art starts. Um, the first is the fact that, you know, if you look at TV and if you look at online, there actually is a lot of history there. There's a lot of experience there, right? There's institutional knowledge, there's ingrained practices, and there's infrastructure that's built to underlie and support, you know, those, that knowledge and, and that exist, those existing practices. People like to think about, who are kind of uninitiated, like to think about digital as being new and, you know, an untapped ground with regard to advertising. And if you think back, if you look at, you know, let's take some of the pioneers. If you look at Yahoo, Yahoo is 20 years old, right? You know, we have 20 years of really, you know, really strong history with regard to digital advertising practices being built up, right? So it's not, you know, it's not a baby, right? This is, we're not in the infant stages. And so there are ways of doing things. Um, to really have true cross-platform video advertising, we need to overcome those, you know, inherent barriers of, hey, this is what I do or this is how I do it and figure out how to do it together. Secondly, you still have separate organizations responsible for TV versus digital buying and selling, right? You have kind of thing one and, and thing, thing two, right? And people responsible for, for independent things. Now you're seeing you know, much more of the organizations come together, but you, know, you still have the digital guy, right? Or you have the social person, right? Or you have the, you know, the, the TV person. And um, you know, we need to see more, um, I think, more working together um, and perhaps even more cross-pollination of these groups to really make, you know, to really overcome the, the, you know, the first thing. And then, you know, lastly, lack of consistent, comparable, and combinable measurement for TV versus digital has really stood in the way here, right? Because, look, you can try things, but, um, you know, if you don't, if you're not able to, and, and you can try to be as integrated as possible in your strategy, but if you can't actually say, look, this is what it did on on online, this is did what it did on TV, and this is what it did on both, and therefore, you know, if you don't have measures that are consistent across both to be able to look at it in combination in, in, in addition to it independently, um, then it's not gonna work, right? Then you have, you know, you often find yourself talking, you know, in different languages almost, right? About, um, about what's going on with regard to advertising. So these are, you know, kind of bubbled up to a, um, some high level things, but these are three of the, uh, the big things. And, you know, obviously given, given what Nielsen does, right, with regard to providing, you know, the TV currency today and the things that we're trying to do in digital, we're really focused on overcoming this last, this, you know, this last barrier. And obviously all these different barriers, you know, the, the things that are making people look at, you know, TV and digital in, in silos are making the key decisions that you need to make about your campaign and about cross-platform advertising, you know, really tough to, really tough to make. So what's needed, like what's gonna actually help us get to specifically effective cross-platform measurement? Um, I think there are a few things. One, needs to be accepted by both media buyers and sellers, right? Like it can't just be, you know, you see some measurement come out and, um, you know, some people say that, oh, well that's the, well that's gonna really empower the media buyers to then go back and drive accountability with, you know, the sellers, right? And um, you know, if measurement's seen as kind of a tool for the media buyers to to decode that, hit you know, hit sellers over the head and you know, and get rates down, not going to be effective, right? It's not going to be effective at, at overcoming those those, those barriers. Um, you know, vice versa, if there's measurement that's that's coming out that's seen as kind of a tool for the sellers, right? Um, based on either what it is or who's providing it, um, to you know, to make their just to make their inventory look better, that's not going to work either, right? You know, we need something provided by an independent third party that's going to be acceptable and believable and you know usable by both by both sides of the um, of the aisle. Um, two, actionability, right? Um, so, in order for something to actually be effective in terms of driving better advertising effectiveness, you know, it's got to be accurate, right? It's got to be delivered quickly enough 
and uh, with enough frequency, right? So quickly enough after the campaign started and with enough frequency during the campaign to you know, be able to do something about that information. It can't be you know, weeks or months afterwards, right? Um, broadly applicable to campaigns as well. What we've seen with some of the, you know, the measurement to date is, um, um, you know, it's only really applicable to very large campaigns, um, which isn't going to cut it, right? Because of fragmentation, because of the desire to try to innovate and try really new things with advertising. Um, you know, if you're only if you're providing measurement that's only applicable to the to the very largest campaigns, um, it can't become a standard, right? It can't be used broadly. Um, granularity of the reporting has to be enough that you can actually do something with it. And again, it has also, um, contrastingly, has to be understandable, right? So it's not, you know, the most complex, uh, you know, measurement that that requires a, um, you know, a measurement science degree to, to be able to work with it. Um, comparable and combinable across media, um, I spoke about before, and you know, holistic, and may sound funny for a guy from Nielsen to say it, right? But we heard it here before, right? In terms of um, engagement being the term that was used, but reach isn't enough, right? Views, you know, views, views aren't enough. Um, and when Nielsen's looking at this stuff today and to try to put it into an understandable, kind of simple framework, we think about it in three ways. Reach, which is, you know, who did my ad reach, right? Resonance, so how is the, for those who were reached, how were they actually influenced by the advertising? And the reaction, did they actually go do something, right? Did they go, you know, buy the product, um, did they go search for, you know, search for the product or search for the brand after it was seen? Um, what action did they take? And this is the way in which we're trying to, um, you know, trying to provide measurement in, in, in these three buckets um, in ways that are, that allow us to connect these buckets. Um, and then lastly, evolutionary, right? I think one thing that, that I've heard um, uh, in the past is, oh, well, guys, don't come to us and um, just make digital look like TV because you're taking us back to the Stone Ages. Vice versa, you know, it's also don't, don't just try to force TV, which is, you know, $80 billion ad spend business today to, to be digital too quickly or else it's not going to work. So, you know, we need to be providing measurement out to the marketplace that allows us to take the, boat, the best of each medium. Where TV, we have a really efficient buy. Um, in digital, we have, you know, we have measurement that is more specific, that is more granular and you know, figure out ways to combine those two. And we're trying to do a few things in order to, uh, you know, to sort of comply with those, those stated requirements and you know, really help the industry uh, move along. One, um, and I sort of group these together by, you, know, you can consider these as um, trying to progress TV measurement and bring some of the best of digital to TV um, is, uh, you know, there are two things here. One is expanding the coverage with regard to existing TV measurement. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about this, but you know, how do we how do we take you know TV ratings and how do we take TV brand effect or what many people still refer to as IG, you know, measures of engagement, and um, cover you know more more platforms. Right, cover more than just you know TV as we've been defining it for the last couple decades, but brings tab tablets into the equation, brings smartphones into the equation, and brings social into the equation. And um, some of the recent announcements that we've made with Twitter, for example, are examples of how we're trying to do that. Um, how do we also take that measurement? And, and so in addition to expanding coverage, actually, you know, you guys think about those, those big buckets, right, that I talked about before, of trying to use TV and online truly together to extend reach, um, or trying to use TV and online again, truly together to really get that duplication and increase engagement. Um, if I was to sort of take a, if somebody wants to get, uh, hazard a guess, what do you think most people are trying to do or what do you think the split would be? Expand Sorry? Expand reach. Expand reach. Like, well, to take a guess. In terms of like a, a, a proportion, like. Uh huh. Any other guesses? 
it's a pretty close, right? It's it's a it's pretty much an even. It's a fairly even split, right? People are trying to do one. People are trying to do the other. Um, makes sense, right? Because you know, um, people are trying to figure out what's the best way to use cross-platform. But you know, there's sort of you know th there are different objectives here. There's not just you know there, there's not just one of these that that people are really trying to go after. Two, um, what we've seen is. So with all the you know hubbub about cross-platform, there there is actually a payoff from you know some of the truly integrated cross-platform campaigns that we've seen. Um, so here's an example of uh, some measurement that we did for um, for a client with cross-platform campaign ratings. Um, and so what we found is um, that by inv uh, by um, investing both in TV advertising as well as digital advertising for this campaign. They were, they were able to get an overall 89% unduplicated reach. Um, so um, by individual silo, it was 72% TV, 52% digital. And you know, in this case, um, what that meant is that basically one in every three digital audience me members were incremental t to TV, kind of untouched by, you know, by TV advertising, which you know, for this advertiser, given what their objective was, um, was actually a pretty good finding for them. Um, and what we've seen, not surprisingly, is that by selecting properties that you know target or, or achieve uh, audiences with relatively low TV watchers, um, that sort of helps you if, if your objective really is to go um, use online to extend your uh, your reach line. Um, in this in this example, which uh, was with a CPG uh, uh, company, you know, general recall was higher for the viewers that were exposed to both. Um, to, to the advertising in both medium. Um, and for those that saw, remember the ad, um, the ability to link back to uh, recall the specific brand um, that the ad was attributable, attributed to was also, uh, was also significantly higher. So payoff, you know, they're seeing payoff from really having integrated cross-platform campaigns. What we're also seeing is that um, you know, again, with these dual ambitions of taking digital to TV advertising and TV to digital advertising, um, by doing that, by sort of adv advancing measurement on both sides, um, the story in terms of the advertising effectiveness does actually change significantly um, in many cases. So for example, and this, this is kind of related to uh, the, the thing that I mentioned before about what ABC was showing at their upfronts. This is actually something that um, Dave Poltrek from CBS recently showed at the um, Audience Research uh, Foundation uh, conference, but you know he showed that so Blue Bloods um, CBS show versus some of the other shows that they um, they're up against in their time slot um, from a rate from just a normal you know age gender demo ratings perspective you know placed whatever tied for last amongst the uh, four broadcast shows, but when you look at um, specifically buyers who are likely to uh, to eat out at casual dining restaurants um, placed significantly higher, right? It was about, you know, it was it placed second um, to uh, to show X um, versus uh, versus being lashed just with age and gender. Um, so again, if you're a, you know if you're a media buyer out there and you're looking at this and you're focused on casual dining, you know, by having this overlay, you may make different decisions with regards to your media planning. And then vice versa. Um, so for a client that was, uh, you know, investing in digital, um, and this is some output from a uh, from an online campaign rating study, um, and was targeting females 18 to 34, um, what they found was, and this gets back to kind of a view is not just a view, um, and it also kind of relates back to the uh, the story about the uh, the plumbing advertising that was picked up from advertising. Um, I think one is look. You know, for the ones that are getting it right or, or seeing the most impact here, they are measuring, right? They're, for media buyers, um, you know, they're measuring across their campaigns and really understanding what they're getting from cross-platform. Um, and for media sellers, they're measuring across their uh, across campaigns that are um, running on their sites and running on their networks and understanding what they can actually deliver and what they can actually contribute to cross-platform campaigns. So it's giving them the information to then go back and work with you know work with their their partners to uh, you know to really inform cross-platform campaigns. Um, two, it's test and learn, right? 
Um, it's, it's the ability, if you are measuring, to then be able to try cross-platform, different cross-platform ad strategies and really understand what's most effective. They're getting out there, they're, you know, they're, 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 they're running integrated campaigns and they're seeing what works. Third, um, keep the viewer in mind. And we heard some of this in the, in the social panel as well as the um, content marketing panel. But um, you know, if you just think about this as a, um, you know, we need to get, um, we need to get advertising out there to reach these people and really trying to uh, to influence them, and we need to hit them, you know, on TV and online. And if you miss out on thinking about the actual viewer that you're that you're trying to reach, thinking about how you can actually weave a consistent thread with regard to the messaging. Um, um, that is uh, that is enhanced by by hitting them both on TV and online, and if you um, if you're not thinking about giving them a reason to actually want to be reached, both on TV and online, um, then you know it's not going to be as effective, right? You're just you're just using this as delivery vehicles versus you know telling a story and, and having a conversation with them. And then lastly, um, you know I think a consistent thing that we're seeing in terms of what's working better versus worse is um, you know, this idea of partnership, right? So using, um, using the measurement to, um, as a negotiation tool and only as a negotiation tool isn't gonna work, right? Because you know, we're all experiencing cross-platform for really the first time. So um, by using the measurement, by using these results to actually you know, be creative and figure out ways to work together and you know, identify, hey, this isn't working but then figure out what will work better versus saying, you know, now you need to go give me a make good or, you know, now I need this back. Um, you know, we're finding that that's definitely, that constructive approach, that partnering approach um, is, definitely, uh, is definitely leading to much better, uh, much better advertising effectiveness, right? Because um, to do the other, the, to do the opposite, to just say, hey, you know, I need this back or, you know, you're gonna get cut off from the plan. Um, it's pretty short term, uh, pretty short term approach. Thank, Chris, thanks very much. Yep. We are, we are actually, Chris is staying with us for the panel, so we're going to fold the Q&A.